Sentinel comes in at three and two. Billy and Skyview is one and three, and Gabe Peppinger will kick it off down the field, and it'll go into the back of the end zone for a touchback, and that's where Skyview and Logan Nelson are going to start the offense. Um, I'm Cole Johnson, along with my partner, Kempson Cross. Yeah, triple option offense. Kier Lieber, I'm sorry, with the carry. Almost 1,000 yards already through four games. And that's another inside handoff for Skyview. <laughs> and that is Kier Lieber again, and he gets a first down to the 34. And you'll see from the outset here that Billing Skyview runs an option offense that you'll see Army run, you'll see Navy run, and that probably has a contributing factor to the fact that their strength is their run game. Yeah, you can see from the outset that Kier Lieber and Salisbury, uh, they average over five yards a carry. And this offense, it runs for 240 yards a game. And this is just Kier kind of the nature of that offense. They want to churn out about five yards every play. And they've been pretty successful in doing that so far. Kier Lieber in the backfield. Salisbury, the other running back, is going to line up to the far side, and he's going to start moving. And ha handoff is to Kier Lieber, and not much going on there. Pulled down. That was Jake Rebish in the middle there. Last time Skyview tried something like that, they were able to draw the Sentinel Spartans offside, so credit the D-line there and the rest of the defense as well to be disciplined enough to watch the ball, wait for the snap, and not be fooled by the motion there. Inside handoff, that is going to be sniffed out. That was Gabe Davis taking the full, taking the handoff this time and not getting anywhere. A Spartan defense right there to meet him, and it's third down. Yeah, a potential problem with misdirection plays is they can be take so long in developing. And we've seen how in the last couple games here at home that we've been watching the Missoula Sentinel Spartans, we've seen the interior of that line can be absolute, can just be really nasty and the Skyview Falcons just find, found that out on that snap. So Salisbury in the backfield on this one. It's third down and eight, so Sentinel getting the stops that they need to have a third and long. Uh, it's a fake handoff. Logan Nelson is going to look to pass, and he's going to be pulled down and given maybe a couple yards on the play as no one was open, and Logan Nelson going off to the far side of the field picks up a couple yards. And it's going to be fourth down for Skyview. you got to think they're probably going to go for it. That's a great tackle, though. Big tackle there in the open field by Jory Breen, who is the lead team leader in tackles for the Sentinel Spartans defense, that has now pinned their ears back. They, Skyview had a little drive going, and now it's kind of stalling out. We'll see if they can convert this fourth and medium to long. And the Skyview fans trying to cheer their team on. And this is Salisbury left side, and he is going to be tackled at the 20. Depends on the spot. I don't think he got it. That depends on the spot. because If it's at right the at the 20, it doesn't look like he got it, and he did not. Yeah, and we've seen that Spart this Spartans defense do that. They've, they've kind of bent and uh, given up some points in the other games that we've seen them play, but when push comes to shove and their backs are kind of against it, uh, in clutch situations like fourth downs like that, they seem to come up big often. Roberts, the quarterback. Handoff, and that is an inside to Deschner, and Deschner's got a lot of room. Actually, that is Crawford down the sideline and gets all the way down to the 35. Connor Crawford, a big gainer. It's a gain of 45 yards. Well, that's going to help out Connor Crawford's three-yard per carry average. A, a good job there by the Sentinel offense to be able to set up the blocks there, and Crawford just is able to bounce that outside and get an explosive play. We talked about how important that is to, for Sentinel to establish the tempo. So here they go. And, ouch. Well, there's a false start penalty as Sentinel was trying to get the offense going. As you mentioned, the high tempo is exactly what they need to get going and get Philly and Skyview back on their heels, but... But penalties like that are exactly the way to stop that momentum. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a trade-off. It really is. And obviously turnovers are the worst way to, to do it. We saw Pepinger make three last week, and he's perfect on the season. He's the senior kicker. But here in the early going, they're going to take a fourth down shot of their own. It's a little longer than Skyview's, though. Nope, they're going to punt. Ah. It, 
They were in the shotgun, they punt it, and it's gonna be down at the two, maybe the one. Call it the one yard line. So that worked out in favor of Sentinel, getting it down to the one. I mean, it's right there on the one foot line. Anderson, and has, out. Anderson Haslam made the down, but Alex Steele with the assist there because he was able yeah, to get, right get down there and without going into the end zone, he was able to deflect it back out. So now Skyview quite literally has to go the length of the field and is in the shadow of their own goalpost. We'll see what the Sentinel yeah, Spartans defense it. can do with this point. field position as well as Skyview, the Skyview Falcons offense. We are and when you emphasize the run as much as the, Billi as much as the Billing Skyview Falcons do, yeah. two, you have to realize two, that not every play no, is going to be an explosive play or a first down. Okay. You're, there's going to be okay. some ugly plays. Okay. We saw okay. one and earlier on right. that was a loss. That one still gained you a couple yards, yep. and okay. it'll be second down and seven. I mean, what do you do, though? Don't you, I mean, wouldn't you want to maybe just, you know, send everybody up on the line? Well, like, it's, it's a lot. The safeties it, up there? With this offense especially, it's all about gaps. It's all about gap assignments, and that's what the defense has to focus on. It's a pretty good-sized hole there. Again, that was Gabe Davis. And so Skyview started this drive on the one-yard line. They have since moved the ball 35 yards out to the 36. It's third down and one. And part of that is that you hope the gaps aren't as big as they've been at times here in the early going. And you hope that you have a guy to fill that gap once it does even open up. But there's several creases that Salisbury and Kierleber have been able to find in the early going. And what's tough about this offense is football's evolved so much. And so this offense is kind of an artifact of early, early football offenses. And this is around the left side, and this is Salisbury again. He's got room to rumble, and he gets down to midfield. And that is a pickup of 13. And so now Skyview on the move. And a great job by both of these backs for Skyview in the early going. But as I was just talking about, you know, that's part of what makes it so hard to defend, not only in the game itself, but in the preparation. Because the concepts uh, as, as a defense are – not what you're used to. The, the, it's not the same as the spread concepts in the pro style. Missoula Sentinel kind of hovering around the eighth position right now. And Logan Nelson is going to get sacked. That was number 38 for Sentinel. Colin Fisher with a big time sack there. Huge play. It is, it is big because now it's third and a mile for this offense that doesn't like to be in this situation. Yes, they're very comfortable with going for it on fourth down, especially when your guys are averaging five yards a carry, and it's fourth and just about that. But when it's third and long, there's not many plays in any playbook for third and long, and so we'll see what Billing Skyview goes to here. Looks like they're going to shotgun. Logan Nelson looking to pass, and he is drilled, and he gets the ball. I've had a nice play. That was... Danny McKittrick knocking the ball away, and Logan Nelson slow to get up. He was absolutely hammered. I think that was Rebish kind of getting the final blow. Rebish was able. Nelson is slow to get up. Yeah, he is up, but yeah, Rebish was able to get to him, but he might be a little woozy after that play. I don't think Rebish was was looking to spear him with his helmet there because first of all, that's just a, not a sound way to tackle. And uh, but credit the secondary there for Sentinel because they were able to get to it just in time to knock that ball away. It's going to be 0-0 at the end of one. Those are the kind of plays that the Sentinel Spartans defense has to make, though, because this offense churns out yardage. It can also kind of lull you to sleep, and then they can the Falcons can rear back and let one go and get an explosive touchdown to take the lead here uh, as we're still scoreless. So good on the Spartans defense there to get that sack and we'll see what they have for the offense here. Hand off to Salisbury and he's knocked backwards. And a nice play there by the Spartan defense. It's gonna be a loss of six. Colin Fisher, the senior defense, defensive lineman getting back there. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of thing that the Spartans defense has to do is put, put this Falcons offense in second and long, third and long especially situations because then you reduce the probability that they'll have a fourth down where they elect to go for it. Sometimes you try to go a beat early 
just to try to get off the ball and try to impose impose your will on the defense. And someone got a little jumpy there, and we'll see if Sky what Skyvy can do with the third and a long. Your fake handoff, and Nelson is in trouble, and he's taken down. Nice play there. Spartan defense right there. That was number 47 for Sentinel, Trevor Duvall on yeah, in on the play. Yeah, Trevor Duvall actually made that, that other tackle against Kierlieber that stopped him from probably having a pretty explosive play. So a couple of big tackles there by Trevor Duvall on that drive. And Crawford is in motion, and Crawford, nope, Roberts will keep it. Roberts has room to run. He's got a first, and he's got a lot more, too. He's going to get down to the 45-yard line, and that is a gain of about 20 on that carry. Good play action. Yeah, not a, we haven't seen a lot of that in the first couple home games here for the Missoula Sentinel Spartans. Last week, they were forced to go one-dimensional and go to the air a lot, which Roberts did relative, uh, pretty well. Uh, they were playing from behind a lot. Um, but a second explosive run play for Missoula Sentinel. We'll see what they do. So second down and two. Roberts looking deep, and he's got a receiver, and it's a touchdown! Mitch Reynolds, six points. Both of the Mitch Roberts to Mitch Reynolds touchdown passes that we have seen here on the field at Missoula County, Missoula County Public Schools Stadium have been pretty similar, where Roberts just kind of gets on a go route, beats his guy, Roberts puts it right on him, and... There's an early lead for the Sentinel Spartans offense, giving the Sentinel Spartans defense a little help. Yeah, only one of the Sentinel Spartans touchdown passes of the six that Roberts has thrown has gone to someone other than Mitch Reynolds. So that gives you an idea of how important he that connection is to this offense. Peppinger to kick the extra point, and it is up and good. And with 7.13 left to go in the first half, Missoula Sentinel Seven, Billing Skyview zero. We'll be right Hoping to get a quick stop on defense. Skyview running the ball pretty well so far. And it's going to be Nelson who's going to keep it. He's got a big hole, and I don't know. He gets out to midfield, to the 40, to the 35. Still going, down to the 26. Don't fill all the gaps against an offense like this. I, 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 I'm I going to keep saying it, just the Sentinel Spartans defense has to close all those gaps because otherwise they will get gashed like that. Still haven't given up a touchdown so far. Six. Fourth and six, we'll call it. Salisbury in motion and the handoff. No pitch. Fake the pitch. Logan Nelson in trouble. He fumbles the ball and he gets back on it. It was fourth down anyway. It wouldn't have mattered. Sentinel's going to take over. Spencer Shock. The junior, sack. the junior linebacker gets in the backfield, tackles Logan Nelson, and that and that's not Skyview's identity is to go to the air like that, and that's maybe part of the reason for the play call there is they're trying to catch the Sentinel defense off guard. Great job by the Spartans defense to get after him again. They've been doing that all night when he drops back to throw. So after after the defense got a big fourth down stop, it's third down and eleven. Roberts will take up the middle, and he's going to get to the first down a lot more, and he picks up about 20 on that play across midfield. Give him about 22 yards, man. Roberts just took off. Whether it was Big play, game. Where, whether it was play call or quick decision making, it it, it, it ended up being the right decision because he was able to run kind of straight up the defense, right down the hash marks, and then he was able to cut it to the outside and get a few more yards there in Skyview territory. So here we go, big third down pickup for Sentinel. They're up 7-0, looking for more. Three wide receivers to the near side. Crawford right next to Roberts. And Crawford, Roberts will fake the handoff and keep it himself. Another big game. There he goes, down the middle of the field, and he gets all the way down to the 26. That's a 22-yard pickup. Roberts fakes the handoff and just takes off. Roberts kind of See reminds it. me of Colin Kaepernick because he has that dual threat ability. He can fit the ball into tight windows. We've seen him miss a several throws in these first couple home games for Sentinel, but when he's on, and he seems to be right now, the, that's when the Sentinel offense really gets rolling. We saw Ryan Ramos uh, have a lower leg Where issue. Where is Ryan Ramos? Yeah. Not sure at all. Yeah, because early in the Helena game, he went down with what seemed to be a lower leg injury, and uh, he's their yards per carry average leader 
but Deschner is their leading rusher. In Roberts the on the fake. He looks to the side, and it is going to be a touchdown, and that is Alec Steele. I have to check the reception one more time. May have been Jory Breen actually that caught it. Because it looked like a nine, but I was thinking, well, Jory Breen's the leading tackler on the defense. Like what? So Roberts with the touchdown connection. Yeah, Spartans playing terrific football right now at 14 nothing. It's Dane Oliver. Standing at the midfield sideline watching his team. And it's a pump fake by Nelson. And he's got a wide open man. And he's got him on the numbers. And there he goes. 45, 30, 30, 25, down to the 20. Big time play right there. And so Sentinel looking to get the ball back with some strategy with the timeout. And then Skyview comes out. And like we talked about, they can go over the top on you if they lull you to sleep a little bit with the run game. Austin Zacker with a 68-yard Catch and run. He also caught a first down. It's a fake handoff by Logan Nelson, and he will be breaking tackles, getting close to the goal line. It looked like he was stood up at the five, able to get down to the one. Yeah, it looked like the play was over, but Logan Nelson, credit him, because we've seen him take a lick when he got rid after getting rid of a football, uh, well, as he got rid of a football on a pass play early on, and but then we've seen him respond and come back with some – Big plays here for Billing Skyview. Under center, handoff, Kier Lieber, he is in, touchdown. So not the ending of the first half that we'd hoped for the Sentinel Spartans. They gave up six points here, pending the extra point to make it seven, but it's gonna be a one touchdown game either way at halftime. Yeah, and we talked about how the two touchdown lead was big because that running offense would ha might have difficulty making it up, but then Billing Skyview made it Loud, loudly and clearly made the statement that they are willing to go to the air if need be, and they were able to convert it into points. The extra point is good for Billing Skyview. Head coach Ron Lepsock, a huge victory on that last drive. It wasn't looking good in the first half, but able to cut the lead in half. It's 14-7. Just about ready to start the second half here at Missoula County Public School Stadium. Cole Johnson along with Kempson Cross as Missoula Sentinel has a 14-7 lead at halftime. Uh, Mitch Reynolds with a 37-yard touchdown reception. Jory Breen had a 13-yard reception at the far side of the field. Um, Mitch Roberts, the recipient, or excuse me, the passing quarterback on both those. He's got 64 yards passing, two touchdowns. And Missoula, or excuse me, Skyview, a couple big plays towards the end of the first half. Nelson with a 53-yard scamper. Um, Kier Lieber has 68 yards and a touchdown run. And uh, Skyview in, within striking distance here. It looked like it wasn't going to be that way at the end of the first half, but a big play kind of toward the end there, and it's 14-7. to seven. And that big play is really what did it because they didn't grind it in the end zone like we expected them to. Well, they did once they got in the red zone, uh, but it was that big play that did that. And the Sentinel Spartans uh, team went up two touchdowns, and we felt like that's kind of what they needed to do to give their defense some breathing room and the offense still needs to carry momentum into the second half here. Roberts has been effective both as a runner and a passer so far tonight, and he needs to continue to do that for the Spartans to be able to maybe extend this lead, and the, we expect the, the defense to stay tenacious, but they are going to probably wear down as the Billing Skyview offense continues to run at them throughout the night, so the offense needs to help them out there. It's the handoff inside, and that is to Crawford. He's got the left side. He's got a little bit of room, and he's running through people, and he's going to get down inside the 45 to about the 42-yard line. There's a flat. And when given room to run, Crawford has been able to make the most of it. He's had two now explosive plays for the Sentinel Spartans offense, and they seem to be rolling pretty well, looking to go back up by two scores. Well, the, the nature of goal line defense is you have to pick one, run or pass, to sell out to. So if it, it, And so it depends on the play call of Sentinel. That's why people get so wide open on the goal line all the time is you have to sell out to one of the two. Roberts to the end zone. He's got him. That is Mitch Reynolds. 
Nope. Jory Breen again. Wow. <laughs> and on the goal line, Jory Breen, Jory Breen the calls lead, it in. The leading tackler on the defense, but he's had two receiving touchdowns tonight on similar plays where similar they play. where they do the play fake and they roll Roberts out to the right. Good to see that that, that, that uh, ankle is doing good after he got up and kind of was limping a little bit earlier in this drive. Ate up almost half the quarter and get another six points. We'll see if Gabe Peppinger can make it seven. So the extra point by Peppinger is up, and it is good. So with 7.13 left to go in the third quarter, Missoula Sentinel takes just about five minutes off the clock and scores a touchdown 21-7 with 7.13 left to go in the third. Is Jory Breen in on this play? It might be. Hand off to Crawford. He's got six. Touchdown, Spartans. 27-7. Crawford's in. The Sentinel... The Sentinel off the Sentinel offensive line was just able to get leverage, stand up there, guys, and Crawford took the handoff, basically just kind of picked where he wanted to go, and there were a couple holes there, and he just dives straight through. Obviously breaks the plane of the goal line, and it's a three possession game now. Sentinel is rolling. Crawford with the touchdown is first of the evening, and Peppinger to attempt the extra point. It is up and it is good. With 2.52 left to go in the third quarter, Sentinel 28, Skyview 7. Roberts in the shotgun to start the fourth quarter. He's looking to his right. He's rolled out, and he is going to run it, and he's got a little bit of room. Left side, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, and inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. It's a gain of about 34 yards on that run. That is maybe the toughest thing to cover is a running quarterback once he gets on the edge. He was able to roll out. He kind of felt the pressure coming from behind, and he saw that no one was open downfield, so he puts his vision down. He looks over, sees a lot of green grass, and goes out to pasture. So, Connor Crawford, Mitch Reynolds, Alex Steele have all come up big for Sentinel as well. Empty set for Roberts. He's going to keep it himself. Big surprise. Gets inside the 10, and he is drilled. At about the seven, call it the eight yard line, but he got the first down. I talked about Kaepernick earlier and how he kind of reminds me of me of him a little bit. I know Cap's more tall. He's taller. He's kind of bigger. He's he's, but he's still got the slender body type, and he put plants his foot in the ground, and he has acceleration. Let me tell you. And Roberts has had some acceleration on that play as well, uh, and he made the decision quickly to pick a lot of yards up with his feet. The one receiver, Reynolds, is in motion. And it'll be the pitch with Alex Steele. He's got the edge, and he's got a touchdown. They love to get Alex Steele on the edge, and that's because good things can happen when you get him out there. That time he was able to make just one or two cuts, and he was able to use his speed almost flat out to get inside the pylon for a, another Masula Sentinel touchdown. Had that whole right side to work with, 34-7 Spartans. The floodgates have opened. That play was the dagger right there. Most likely, and that's it, that's the average kind of, of uh, sky view on the season is about 32 points a game they're giving up. And the offense has typically been scoring about just, just about a touchdown less than that. And they just haven't been able to do it because the Spartans' defense has come up big tonight. Extra point is good by Gabe Peppinger. Under 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. A four touchdown lead for the Spartans, 35 to seven. This is the kind of offense because it's tough to prepare for and it's it can wear you down that can can light up the scoreboard. It just didn't tonight and credit the Spartans defense. Nelson will roll out. He's looking long and it is incomplete. Uh, good idea looking for Caleb Taco on that one just out of his reach. It's a fourth down. Come yeah, on. Taco's their leading receiver. And, but well, not on the night though. Uh, but in the statistics uh, leading up to this game, it looked that Taco was the leading receiver. He's also kick returner, punt returner. He's an explosive player, and he had a touchdown maybe there, but Logan Nelson just missed him. It's, it's been a fun night so far. Good way to celebrate homecoming for Sentinel. Kier Lieber is going to find the end zone on this next run and get into the end zone for Skyview with three minutes left to go in the game. So Kier Lieber finishes it off to make it 35-13. And Gabe Davis will have an extra point attempt coming. Friday night, light, Friday night lights shining bright tonight. We'll see what Gabe Davis does here. 
This is a squibber, and it is going to be Ooh. covered up by Skyview. Is going to get this football, folks. So Skyview's got the football. It's 35 to 14. And the call, I believe, there by the referees is that Skyview was offside. Oh, wow. So they're not Holy even going to get the opportunity get the we were ball. talking so, about. Final from Missoula County Public School Stadium, Sentinel 35 to 14. They were pretty much in control of the second half, uh, scored the first three touchdowns of the second half. Skyview got one late, but it's a three touchdown uh, win for Sentinel, and they improved to three and two in the conference. They were able to take the two touchdown early lead. Skyview was able to make their most explosive play of the night into their first score. And they were down by just a touchdown going into the lockers. But credit Dane Oliver and this coaching staff of the Sentinel Spartans. Credit this team for coming out and, like you said, taking control of this ball game in the second half. A homecoming night win to take the team to a, wi to a winning record. And we'll be back with more on that. Missoula Sentinel beats... Billing Skyview tonight, 35 to 14. As Kempson mentioned, we will be back with more. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you back to Missoula County Public School Stadium where the Missoula Sentinel Spartans, Kempson, uh, finished off a 35 to 14 win. Uh, their defense played terrific tonight. They were able to just make big stops when they needed to against Skyview's running game and uh, get some big plays from uh, Mitch Reynolds. Uh, Mitch Roberts, obviously, uh, played a terrific game tonight. Uh, they didn't turn the football over and uh, they just took control in the second half. Yeah, the two biggest players for me, for, Mount, for Sentinel, uh, for me would be uh, Mitch Roberts, because with both his, his arm and his feet, he was able to drive the Masula Sentinel offense down the field and uh, kind of have a breakout game for, at least on this season, for the Sentinel Spartans offense. And they, they needed that because they were kind of shooting themselves in the foot the last couple weeks at home with some turnovers, and they were able to play mistake-free pretty much for throughout the night. And another big play or a big name would be Jory Breen on the offensive side of the football, actually. He's the leading tackler for Missoula Sentinel on the defensive side, but he came up with two receiving touchdowns tonight. Yeah, Jory Breen, two touchdown receptions. Uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch Reynolds had a 37-yard touchdown. Uh, Mitch Roberts, a few passing touchdowns. Uh, Kier Lieber for uh, Missoula, or excuse me, for Billing Skyview had a touchdown run toward the end of this game. Uh, Missoula Sentinel really just a complete game uh, throughout. Played well in the second half, as we mentioned. Uh, they're three and two in the conference. Uh, they won two out of three here. They lost to Helena High last week, but things are looking up. They go on the road against Great Falls High, and then they'll come back home. Uh, to start two more home games throughout the week. Yeah, and here tonight, uh, also I was uh, impressed by the guts um, and the toughness shown by Logan Nelson, quarterback of the big of the Billing Skyview Falcons. And the Sentinel Spartans team was just too much for the Billing Skyview Falcons tonight. And we'll see how they do on the road against Great Falls next week, and we'll see them in two weeks. Yep, we will. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this has been Spartan TV. Missoula Sentinel wins at 35 to 14 over Billing Skyview. They improved to three and two on the season. I want to give a shout out too to Cindy Schultz. Thank you so much for these polos. Um, awesome job, and thank you so much for the production crew, just for everything you do. As Missoula Sentinel wins 35 to 14 over Billing Skyview. Thanks so much. Take care. Y'all come back.